Hey everyone, Mike Miller with the Herald Times, joined by IU basketball columnist Jeremy Price coming to you from Assembly Hall once again this season for the final time for a non-conference game. Yes, that's Long-awaited good. Long-awaited finale of the non-conference <laughs> season. Uh, then it ended tonight with uh, Austin P coming in, uh, struggling Austin P. Not your father's Austin P team, at least not your father's Austin P team from March. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> the, Austin P actually made the NCAA tournament last year with a um, really spirited run through the. Ohio Valley Conference tournament won all four games there, and then ran into Kansas. Actually, in Des Moines, they're at the same place as IU last year to uh, to start the NCAA tournament. Had an absolutely outstanding player in Chris Horton last year. Uh, he was now in the D League, but he was absolutely one of the best offensive rebounders in the country last year. He basically, averaged a double double. He's not on the team anymore. Um, a couple other guys aren't on this team anymore, and they are not. Uh, they're not March Austin P. I'll say that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Indiana won 97-62. Um, against, again, an Austin P team that was, frankly, struggling defensively. A lot of defensive struggles for this Austin P team, Austin P team, which had, uh, I think, opponents were shooting, like, it had an effective field goal percentage of, like, 58%, uh, going on 60%. It was, it was pretty bad. Um, but, you know, they came out in a, uh, you know, dedicated 2-3 zone, and uh, Indiana just shot right over top of it. Um, I mean, threes they have in that first half 11 11 yes. ended up with 15 they kind of abandoned it in the second half and yeah they went pretty much man in the second half yeah uh but another hot shooting night for the hoosiers who have now had back-to-back games uh shooting over 60 percent it's uh i think that, that austin p came out playing zone was a good thing for indiana uh and while they were able to basically shoot them out of it i think it puts a lot of things on film for indiana to look at and go back and and review because if they see this against a Wisconsin or Nebraska or whoever in Big Ten play, you're not going to always, especially when you go on the road, be able to just shoot your way over a zone the way they were doing tonight. They were not you know, getting the ball to the middle very often, not working the baseline very often. Uh, just... You know, it worked, but it wasn't uh, you know necessarily the way you perfectly draw up your zone offense in an ideal world. So I think there's a lot of things put on film now that this team can go back and look on, uh, see what they need to do. And it just took them a little time to get comfortable. Uh, you know, some guys kind of stale, not moving with the right at the beginning of the game. Uh, one thing, you know, Thomas Bryant got taken out early, which is not the first time that's happened this year. Mm-hmm. Had a seat for a little while. I think he had a little chat mm-hmm. over there came back in and next thing you know he's throwing down dunks and doing thomas bryant things so yeah. uh, just kind of a to be expected start to this one as far as uh, you know last game before christmas yeah um but probably better than expected the rest of the way for a game before christmas because we've seen a <laughs> lot of teams this week including tonight tonight yeah struggle to get through this last game before the break so they got through it and uh, well actually not didn't get totally through it juan morgan got hurt yeah uh, late in the first half, looked like a uh, right ankle injury for Jawan Morgan. Um, he he got up and he, he limped off. Um, he didn't require assistance. We've seen guys in the past would have you know get picked up by Lionel Anderson. He limped off, went the long way actually around uh, <laughs> around the baseline there into the IU locker room. Came back out, sat on the bench in the second half, did not play uh, after the game. Tom Crean really didn't have a concrete update other than to say that his sitting in the second half was by no means precautionary. He just, he couldn't play. Yeah. So they're, they're going to have uh, six days to figure out whether he can come back from Nebraska or you, you just kind of sit in until uh, Louisville moving forward. But uh, got through the game, didn't get through it totally unscathed, which is unfortunate for Indiana. Um, but you did see some nice things uh, from Josh Newkirk, who obviously just a few, five days ago in Indianapolis, just really struggled in, for, in the first half offensively. Um, you know, we, we heard a story of, of him really taking a mistake he made on Monday against Delaware State to heart. Uh, and and he's, he's kind of a guy who's still trying to find his place, trying to find his footing in this IU offense, finding out where everybody is at, at, at any given time on the floor, where they like to be and where they want the ball. Uh, but tonight, I think, was a real positive step in, in the right direction, no matter who the opponent was for Josh Newkirk. Yeah, and I think with the story you're referring to is sort of a reminder. And we've kind of picked up on this as we've gotten to know Newkirk a little bit throughout this season, but it seems like a very conscientious mm-hmm. um, kind of guy, guy that wants to do the right thing for himself, for his team, for his teammates. And uh, sometimes that has resulted in, in trying to do too much sure. uh, and, and trying to force things a little bit. Sometimes it's resulted in being a little bit tentative and not making the 
the opportunity play when it's there. And so he's sort of trying to find that balance right now. And that's part of where this schedule makes it a little bit difficult because you go through struggles against a Butler, which is at one level, and then you come back and you try to make some corrections and, and you do some better things against an Austin P, but it's Austin P. So how do you, those corrections and fixes translate next week when we get to Nebraska and we get to Louisville? So there, there's still a little bit of a learning curve there. So I think we're still going to see some adjustments, mm -hmm. at least through the month of January. What you hope is by the time February rolls around that he can take the way he's playing against a team like tonight and finally translate that into Big Ten NCAA tournament play. Mm -hmm. And this again, this is a game you try not to take too much out of, uh, just you know, big big picture lessons. Uh, but a really strong game for Indiana's backcourt at large. Newkirk was obviously a part of that. Uh, James Blackman Jr. and Robert Johnson combined for, I believe, 44 points. Um, and they were obviously right right there in the thick of things as far as shooting over that zone. I think uh, Rob Johnson had uh, 15 points pretty early on, actually, I think, by, maybe by some point in the first half. I mean, yeah. he was he was three. I think for, he might have hit all six threes in the first half, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm not five or six of yeah. his threes, yeah. But, I mean, it's a good sign, though, if you can just – you see the backcourt kind of forming a little bit right now, which is, um, again – at least in part with uh, with New Kirk's continued uh, evolution in this program, but also guys like you know James Blackman getting back into things and Robert Johnson growing too. And it's it's kind of interesting because this was a night where OG Ananobi, Thomas Bryant, Jawan Morgan were all fairly quiet relatively, but when Robert Johnson and James Blackman are shooting like they are tonight, well, you know, <laughs> who really needs to get the ball inside, I guess. But uh, it's sort of one of the advantages this team has is obviously they're capable of doing it inside and outside, which you want to do and what they did a better job in the second half of was getting the ball inside and then kicking it back outside or getting the ball inside drawing free throws I mean I think two free throws in the first half didn't shoot their next set of free throws till about midway through the second half and then shot what 10 11, or 12 11 for 4 oh, they wind up, yeah what they wind up 12 12 16, 12, 16. Yeah. so uh, you know most of those free throws coming in the last 10 minutes of the game finally when they were able to assert themselves a little bit and the other thing that we would be remiss if we I was did not about to bring it up. mention that we learned tonight <laughs> is don't hop, Mike. Hold on. Keep talking. I'm going to bring up a picture of it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as it turns out that this particularly applied to Josh Newkirk, who was just at the center of everything for whatever reason tonight, <laughs> apparently. But uh, Tom Crean had a little sign uh, he <laughs> held up during the first half and uh, got a firsthand look at it laying over on the scorer's table. Uh by the grad assistants over there, but uh, it said "Don't hop" with a picture of a little bunny rabbit with his basket. It's hopping kind of, it's, through it, midair. Frankly, it's. I, I just I, I was I refuse to believe this is real because you know they have this whole graphics department here at Indiana. It's like and and they did. Here, let me just show you first. It's. Oh, oh, it's still Mike. You can't. Oh. I don't know if that does it justice. No, you can't really see it. But anyway. Just take my word for it. It is absolutely uh, hilariously ridiculous looking. Um, I didn't believe it was real. It's very real. It was not photoshopped. No, it was not photoshopped. Although it could very quickly become a meme that is photoshopped. <laughs> um, no, it was. It was. I, I didn't believe it, and then I. I, I think I brought it up to uh, to Newkirk after the game, and yeah, he said that it's it's a bit of a reminder. Even Crean says, yeah, you see that you you remember it. Yeah, and you do because it's <laughs> hilarious looking. Um, but yeah, I love the I love the grin that sort of sheepishly crossed all the players' faces <laughs> yeah. when you brought that up. Uh, <laughs> and they all just kind of had this look on their face like, I, I can't believe Coach had that sign out there, you know? <laughs> Coach, it's like, Dad, stop embarrassing us. Yeah, exactly. Like. <laughs> so, it's, bad, it's bad enough you had it, but now <laughs> reporters are asking about it. Come it was on. all over BTN. Yeah, that's yeah. how we found out about it. It was about a screen grab. You see, probably, if we you're love watching, social you media. saw it. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting up top tonight, actually, right... Uh, just right, of, right there. There we go. Right there. Yep. So I, I didn't see it, but yeah, he confirmed it. Other guys confirmed. I didn't believe. I thought they were pulling my leg. <laughs> pulling, pulling my bunny tail. Pulling, pulling no, both your legs. Thing. Anyway, glad we could talk about the don't hop because that was absolutely hilarious and uh, a very real thing. So uh, and, and this was a perfect night to pull something out, and I wrote about this. That this was a, the perfect yeah. night to pull something like this out because of this game, this setting, this scenario yeah. to get something that would get their attention that that would uh, as much as it's probably funny on one hand it, it's something memorable and it, it really sticks in your mind and it's it's something for the players to really focus on and focus on the details and focus on doing the things they need to do to make this a fun easy comfortable 
Christmas going into Christmas break win instead of a nail biter and one of those that you walk away not feeling so great about things. Yeah, totally. Well, with that, we just did ten minutes on Austin P. That's great. Yeah. Wow, didn't think that was gonna happen. With anyway. that, Mike is headed to Santa Clara. Yep. Right. Santa Clara, technically San Francisco. I don't. I, it's it's all the kind Bay of spread area. Out the Bay area. It's all yeah. spread out. The bowl practices and uh, events are spread out. The team's actually going to Alcatraz on Chris or the day after Christmas. So. I, th- I think we're following them to Alcatraz, which I'm swimming. The team is, has a has a boat, but um, anyway, yeah, we'll we'll be out there. Myself and uh, photographer Chris Howe will be following IU's football team this weekend in uh, in the Bay Area. We'll get out there Saturday morning and uh, kind of go from there. Got a couple practices this weekend, uh, a big media press conference event on Monday. Tuesday is kind of a slow day, and then you got the game on Wednesday. It'll be a uh, IU athletics doubleheader with the basketball game here at Assembly Hall. If you're here, you can actually stay after the game, after the basketball game's through, and watch the football game on this big bad boy over hanging over top of the court. I might join you folks. I'll be here. Yeah. I'll be here for some Nebraska. I'll be sweating bullets on a deadline of <laughs> 8.30 for a football game. Man, that's going to be rough. That's, anyway. That's rough when you have to the game are done at the end of the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. That's enough. Merry Christmas to you all, you guys. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Happy holidays, soon. everybody.